Hey everyone, it's Mr. Drake. This video looks at the very basics behind the formulation of and early application of the policy of containment. The theory of containment states that the United States should do whatever it can along with its Western non-communist allies to keep communism from spreading any further than it already had. Um, by 1945, the Soviet Union was communist, uh, as was most of Eastern Europe as a result of the Soviet occupation uh, at the end of World War II. So the United States wanted to do whatever it could to keep communism from going any further further than it already had. Uh, this sort of ties into another uh, theory related to communism, which is the domino theory. The fear that if one nation falls to communism in a particular area, its neighboring countries may fall as well. That was especially applied to uh, Southeast Asia, uh, Vietnam, those areas more so than in, uh, in Europe. The theory of containment was developed by two officials at the State Department. One was Dean Acheson. He's the uh, guy with the mustache. Um, he was an undersecretary of state uh, as of the end of the Second World War. He became Truman Secretary of State in 1949. Also, George Kennan, who was an employee of the State Department and was an expert and an analyst on all things Soviet Union. And he is the primary... Uh, developer of the theory of containment. Initially, in the years following World War II, containment was simply a theory and an option that was on the table for combating the Soviet Union, but the United States was still leaning towards trying more diplomatic routes, i.e. through the United Nations. But throughout the late 1940s, there was a gradual shift in thinking containment eventually becomes the predominant foreign policy of the United States government as it related to the Soviet Union. And you begin to see that shift in 1947 when the United States um, rearranges or reorganizes all of these defense-related entities in the government and creates some new things. They took the um, Department of War and the Department of the Navy and a few other smaller agencies and combined them all into the Department of Defense. Um, and the first uh, Secretary of Defense, James Forrestal, took office in 1947. The National Security Act also created the National Security Council, which was a group of advisors to the president on issues of foreign policy and national security. This was also the birth of the Central Intelligence Agency, or the CIA, which was the first peacetime intelligence organization ever in the United States. And it acted without legislative or executive oversight or approval. So as a result, it was actually fairly controversial. Um, George Cannon continued to champion the policy of containment throughout the late 1940s um, with letters to magazines and uh, policy papers that he published, um, sometimes anonymously, saying that basically the Soviets did not understand diplomacy and the Soviets only understood force and so that America... Um, could continue to have the upper hand. They should build up as much of a military presence around the world as they could to deter the Soviet Union from trying to advance their cause or their, uh, their way of life, uh, however you want to put it. Um, NSC 68 was an official policy paper that came out in 1950 from... Um, Kennan, and it was top secret initially, and it, it came out publicly later on. But... Uh, Kennan in NSC 68, NSC standing for National Security Council, um, laid out how the U.S. would go about containing communism, doing things like building up its military presence around the world as much as it could, helping our non-communist allies, especially in Europe, arm themselves to defend against communist intrusion, things of that nature. And Kennan had been vindicated after the Chinese Civil War in 1949 when the communists took over China. And a lot of what he predicted in terms of the domino theory and other countries falling to communism, um, a lot of people thought those things were starting to come true. So the United States government from that point forward really embraced the theory of containment as the primary way to fight communism all around the world, but especially in Asia and in Western Europe. That will do it for this video. Um, be sure, if you're one of my students, to check your links on Moodle and uh, look for other activities relating to uh, containment and the Cold War in the 1940s and 1950s. Feel free to post questions um, in the comment section below or contact me directly if you're one of mine. Cheers!